Yes, Mr. Tuckley. Thank you, Your Honour. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Applewhite, uh, could I please ask you to go to paragraph two of your report? Mm. Yes. Now, my learned friend, uh, the counsel assisting the Commission, I think, took you to the uh, qual formal qualifications you have, which include a bachelor's degree in social work, a master's degree, and also a doctor of philosophy in clinical social work. But I don't think he mentioned that uh, you have some 22 years of experience in dealing with the matters you refer to there, that is, conducting root cause analysis of such cases. Yes. That's correct. And for the purposes of this report, or your, st or your statement, that uh, you've relied upon your experience of the past 22 years in forming your opinions. That's correct. Sorry, I'm not sure I quite understand it. Um, I had thought your recent work was more educational. I can... My, my recent work is in education, but I continue to conduct root cause analysis of cases and uh, consult with organizations that have particular cases as well. And the 22 years... Sorry, the, the extensive experience working directly with sexual offenders. Yes. When was that? That was, well, I began working with sexual offenders in the Catholic Church in 1992. And I've worked with various organizations that have sexual offenders that are still members of the church or still are part of an organization, as well as organizations that serve juveniles minors who have also sexually offended and working with them to develop supervision plans for residential treatment programs. So what's your direct work with sexual offenders? That would be um, going into the environment where they're living, um, interviewing them, and working out supervision plans, as well as during times when I've been asked to do a, an investigation for an organization that has already They've been through the criminal justice system, but the organization wants to do a root cause analysis. In that case, I would, I would interview the sexual offender, which is not the same thing as being a therapist for the sexual offender. And I've, I've never worked as a therapist for sexual offenders, but I've worked in supervision plans as well as doing follow-up with them to determine how it was that they selected particular organizations or particular victims. Thank you, Aaron. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Applewhite. Dr. Applewhite, um, my learned friend, Mr. Stewart, asked you some questions about paragraph 10 of your statement. And in particular, he asked you some questions about the last sentence in paragraph 10. Do you recall those questions? I recall. Yes. Um, can I ask you, please, did the last sentence in paragraph 10 in any way inform the opinion that you have expressed in paragraph 36 of your opinion, of your report? No, I, I was offering that as information about the organization under the title background information. Thank you. Uh, you also asked some questions about uh, paragraph 20. And in particular, the second sentence uh, in paragraph 20 that the ministerial servants are not authorised to provide spiritual guidance, counselling, or any other pastoral services to members of the congregation. And do you recall those questions? I do. Uh, did the second sentence in paragraph 20 uh, form, or was it the basis of any of the opinion you expressed in paragraph 36? No. Thank you. 
Now, um, as His Honour's raised with you, one of the difficulties that has been experienced, and this is no fault of your own and no criticism of you, but uh, the opinion expressed in paragraph 36 is a uh, compendious opinion, obviously based upon what you have read uh, and your experience. Um, would it be of assistance to you um, if you were able to provide a more fulsome or perhaps supplementary uh, report expressing the reasons and the, uh, setting out the documentation that you relied upon in expressing, sorry, in coming to the conclusion in paragraph 36? It's a, it's, a, it's a small research project, and so I haven't had an opportunity to do that where I laid out the years and the different organizations and the practices that are in place. Um, if, if it was helpful to the court, then, then I could do that. So, so if His Honor were to give permission for you to provide a supplementary opinion, you would be prepared to undertake the task of setting out more, in a more fulsome way the reasons you have for reaching that opinion. If, if I were asked to, yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Topley, I can appreciate why you asked the question, but the issue for us at the end of the day is not who's best. No, I understood, Your Honour. And what we have agreed, mm -hmm. I think, um, is that there are some problems with the current structure of the processes. That's clear, isn't that? yeah, Am I right? Yes. We've, we've agreed that. Now, um, I don't know of any other religious organisation, which is how this is framed, yes, sure. which has the, the processes with the flaws that we've identified in the Jehovah's Witnesses. They may have other flaws. Indeed, we've published some reports about other religious organisations already. So um, certainly, if you wish the doctor to uh, do that work, that's, that's, that's um, appropriate. Thank you, Anna. But I have to warn you that at the end of the day, the question is not who wins the competition. No, that's and what will remain, as I understand at the moment, are the flaws in your client's current processes. That's understood, Your Honour. Yeah. But um, Dr Applewhite is here to assist the Commission. Sure. As Your Honour, um, as Dr Applewhite has said, she is not an advocate for any party, yeah. and we consider that it would be, if it's of assistance to the Commission, it should be offered. Commission. What would be of greatest assistance is not is not an expression of opinion as to who's best and who's worst, but an expression of opinion as to what are the good things and what are the bad things, both in the Jehovah's Witnesses and anyone else's processes. You understand? I do, Your Honour, and that can certainly be taken on. And if Your Honour would be so good as to allow Dr. Apple White Ace the opportunity to present a supplementary report, uh, that can be addressed. I'm sure. Dr. Applewhite would be prepared to make herself available for any further questions that the Commission may have of her. Well, we'd have to, we'd have, to m have that opportunity if that was required. It could, of course, be done by video link. But, yes, Your Honour. Um, but, and, and we'd need to have a time frame, a fairly short time frame, oh. on the doing of any work because we have so many things to do that we just can't let things drift. So, no, I understood, Your Honour. I'm, I'm talking in a matter of a minimum, minimum number of weeks. I'm, it's subject to Dr. Applewhite's availability and uh, work commitments. If I'm, I'm sure if Dr. Applewhite could assist the Commission, she would. That's true. Well, again, I stress that uh, work that leads to the winning or losing of a competition is not going to help us. No, understood, Your Honour. Understood. At the same time, I think that um, uh, what's fallen from Your Honour in terms of the, the good and the bad, there's no point in throwing out the good with the bad. So what is good should be kept. No, but ultimately what I'm going to look to you to help me and the Commissioner with is um, if there is bad, what's going to be done about it? Well, I, I think that some of the questions I'll ask, Your Honour, will certainly assist, may assist Your Honour in that regard, but certainly that's what the, if I can put it this way, that's what we're here for, to demonstrate that, amongst other things, the uh, policies, practices and procedures of the Jehovah's Witnesses, like all other organisations, evolve over time, and that the present policies, practices and procedures are not those that existed some 25 years ago, 
Are they what's presently contained in the document judicial hearing procedure? Uh, Your Honour, the, um, the procedure, in fact, that's, that's why I use the expression policies, practices and procedures. The procedures are set out in the Elders' Handbook, KS10, but they, the handbook is supplemented by the letters of instructions given to the Elders, but it's also supplemented by the advice provided by the Service Department, and Your Honour will hear from Mr Spinks of the Service Department as to how matters are handled by the Service Department, so that the uh, precise uh, and sensitive way in which matters are dealt with will depend upon each individual case that comes before the Service Department. Are you saying to me that the document we have, um, which is the judicial hearing procedure in the shepherding of the flock document, is, in, is not, in fact, always followed? Your Honour, the, um, it's a matter of submission, but th there is within the procedure scope for um, ad adaptation of the procedure to the individual circumstance. We'll have to take us to that, but could you answer my question? Y yes, it is. It's always followed? No, no, no Your Honour, it's not it's always not. followed. No, no. Yeah, Your Honour will have heard that um, the procedure is for judicial cases generally, but it is adapted to specific child abuse, adapted specifically to child abuse cases. So, for example, as Dr. Applewhite said earlier, <coughs> pardon me, if a child would not wish to appear before the judicial committee, it would be, it could be adapted to allow the when I say child, a person under 18, to provide a written statement about the circumstances. And Your Honour will hear from Mr Spinks about cases where that has occurred. What about an adult who was abused as a child? So the courts have dealt with that issue. Yes, Your Honour. Uh, at least in this state and in some other states. I'm not sure about America. It's a really serious issue. No, understood, Your Honour. And, I, and um, we've seen from Your Honour's questions what Your Honour is most concerned with and that will certainly be addressed. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, you can take this back to your client, obviously, but if the procedure is not followed, it would be a very good idea to write out what the procedure actually is and include it in the document. Yes, sir. I mean, that's, that's the starting point. Yes, sir. Um, what but the other, the other problem, which I know is a serious problem, mm. is what happens in the event that there is only uh, the one a person to give evidence, that is, the survivor. And that's another really <coughs> serious problem, because if you put mandatory obligation to inform, together with incapacity to accept, if the survivor is the only witness, you've got a potential to create really serious trauma. And the person. And, but, uh, and, you know, we have to, we'll have to address it, and okay. your client will have to as well. Yes, that's understood, Your Honour. I mean, as Your Honour knows, um, Your Honour knows because Your Honour was here, uh, this week we've heard, understandably, and of course, first of all, from the victims themselves, and then those persons who handled the matter, um, in both cases, approximately 25 years ago. Um, as I said earlier, matters have evolved over time. Your Honour will hear next week from those who now address such matters directly, and Your Honour will hear how the practices and procedures have evolved, how they are much more <coughs> sensitive, case sensitive, to the individual persons concerned. So well, we look forward to that, but that we will also look forward to you telling us what's going to be done about the documentation yes, sir. that records what should happen. Well, Your Honour, I mean... So let's, let's leave it at this stage, but there's a lot of work to be done. Understood, Your Honour. Thank you. Um, <coughs> John, pardon me for one minute. I can't remember where we got to in, before Your Honour and I had the uh, discussion. Um, I, I think I was uh, on paragraph 20, and what I was asking you, Dr. Applewhite, was whether the uh, second sentence of paragraph 20 informed the opinion that you expressed in paragraph 36. And I we think got a little bit no. past that. Yes, I think. And it, I had we, said no, that it was 
piece of background information. Right, thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Applewhite, um, at, beginning at paragraph 22 of your statement, you deal with the um, matters you did rely upon, as I understand it, for the purposes of reaching your opinion, and you specifically set out some of those matters, including, uh, for example, at paragraph 26, how child <coughs> sexual abuse is regarded as a crime by Jehovah's Witnesses. And, I, and you've also quoted in paragraph 26 the passage from the Elders' Handbook, Shepherd the Flock of God. And I think you're asked some questions by my learned friend, Mr. Stewart, about whether the Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged or uh, to report matters. <clears throat> and in the passage, pardon me, uh, in the paragraph that you quote in paragraph 26 of your report, it is stated, is it not, that um, child abuse is a crime never suggest to anyone that they should not report an allegation of child abuse to the police or other authorities. If you are asked, make it clear that whether to report the matter to the authorities or not is a personal decision for each individual to make and that there are no congregation sanctions for either decision. Elders will not criticise anyone who reports such an allegation to the authorities. If the victim wishes to make a report, it is his or her absolute right to do so. Is it your understanding that the approach taken by the Jehovah's Witnesses is that it is the right of the individual, the right of the victim, whether to report the matter or not? Yes, as well as to report themselves if they're required by law to do so. And is it also your understanding that it is not the right of another person to deny to the victim the, they, the right they have to report. That's my understanding. Thank you. <coughs> um, if, if I could ask you please to go to paragraph 43 of your report. In paragraph 43, you have set out in a number of subparagraphs a number of the articles, sorry, some of the articles that the Jehovah's Witnesses have published over time concerning child uh, molestation. Uh, that is correct? Mm -hmm. um, it, this wouldn't be over time. This was uh, this particular paragraph and the subparagraphs are referring to. Um, Ah, oh, the particular magazine. A particular yeah. publication that contained multiple articles. Yes. Uh, and that's from, uh, was published on the 22nd of January 1985? That's correct. Yes. Um, based on your work and experience with other religious organizations, and taking on board the point that His Honor makes, that it's not necessarily just a comparative exercise, but based <coughs> on your experience, your knowledge and experience of other religious organizations. Uh, do you know of any other religious organization that published as early as 1985 several articles dealing with child molestation? Um, there are writings that other religious organizations have produced, uh, but not for parents and families, not to be published for all members of the community. And I think you gave, <clears throat> gave evidence to the effect that the Awake magazine uh, is discussed by the congregation, that articles in the Awake magazine are discussed by the congregation? Yes, and the Awake magazine is one of the publications that's, that's used when meeting with people in door-to-door -door ministry. So it would be a magazine that people are more familiar with from that perspective as well. Uh, at paragraph 45, uh, you ex 
express an opinion, which my learned friend took you to, again, would it be of assistance to you to be able to expand upon paragraph 45 so that the Commission may understand the materials that you were there referring to? I don't think whether it's assistance to me is really the question. Um, if it's assistance to the court, if it's assistance to the Commission, I'm happy to do it. But, um. Thank you. W would you want to be... Would oh, it, would again, you... with the caveat, it's not a competition. No, Your Honour, understood. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're really not interested as to who got there first. Understood, Your Honour. What we want to know is, um, are they all in the right place now? That's what we're really interested in, in this context. Thank we you. do need to understand how organisations may have responded in the past. That's, that's our terms of reference. It requires us to do that. Yes, sir. But um, we're not in the business of comparative exercise. No, I understand, John. I think it goes to the point, John, that um, uh, because these procedures have evolved over time, because the practices and procedures have evolved over time, one can't... The ultimate submission that one would make is that one can't look back 25 years and simply judge what occurred 25 years ago by today's standards? Uh, so no, but there's um, a necessity for us to identify <coughs> whether what happened in the past was good or bad. Correct, Your Honour. And if correct. it doesn't meet today's standards, we will say so. Yes, Because sir. people need to understand where deficiencies were, if there were deficiencies in the past. Yes, Your Honour. And then our, our concern is to make sure everything's as good as it can be going forward. That's, uh, we understand that, Your Honour. I suppose, Your Honour, the point is that one has to put things into context. And uh, 25 years ago, the context was different from today. Well, there's a much greater awareness about such matters. Well, that's a complex <coughs> question. It is, Your Honour. I don't think it can be covered by that short statement. Uh, not, not intended to be covered by it, Your Honour, no. but simply to... Yeah, again, for the purpose of assisting the Commission, and I, I take on all, I've taken on board all that Your Honour has said, but for the purpose of assisting the Commission, and in respect of the opinion that's proffered, it would, I think, be better, in my respectful submission, for the Commission to have that assistance. Um, we're, we're happy to receive it. Thank uh, you. On, on the condition that the doctor's available in some way to be asked questions about it. Thank you. Um, but mindful that whoever asked her to give this form of statement, in some respects, was missing the point. And, uh, and, and I don't want the point to be emphasised in a way that's not going to be helpful to us. That's no, Your Honour. Well, thankfully, we have the transcript and Your Honour's words. Uh, <coughs> Dr Applewhite, you asked some questions by my learned friend, Mr. Stewart, uh, about some extracts from a, a final report uh, of the Australian Institute of Family Studies called Conceptualising the Prevention of Child Sexual Abuse. And in particular, you were asked some questions about... It's Exhibit 29.15. Thank you, Your Honour. Mr. Finkelhor's uh, Four Preconditions Model. Yes. Now, I, I understand that Mr. Finkelhor is a sociologist? I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that he's a sociologist. He could be a psychologist, but he may be a sociologist. I, I would have to, I'd have to look what his educational background was. But he's been studying in this field since the late 1970s. Yes, and, and I understand he was one of the persons referred to in the Awake magazine article that you referred to in your report as well. Yes, he's, he's one of the seminal researchers in this field. Now, on page 31 of that document, which you were taken to, uh, there was a, a table you were taken to? Yes. And you were asked questions about the social and cultural factors? Yes. Now, going above that, uh, do you see the paragraph which says, the, the written paragraph, which said the third and fourth preconditions move the explanation for offending beyond the perpetrator to account for their external environment? Yes. And then do you see the sentence beginning, external inhibitors? Yes. Can include if there are bystanders around to protect the child, for example, the child's mother? 
other family members, teachers, etc., or if the environment is not conducive to abusing a child? Yes. Uh, is it your understanding that the Jehovah's Witnesses place great emphasis upon the family unit? In, in this context or just in general? In general and in this context. Mm. Um, in general, they place great emphasis on the family unit, yes. And they place great emphasis upon the family protecting the child? The publications speak both to bystanders or general people around, but also speak very specifically to parents and um, what parents can do and things that they should pay attention to and situations that they should avoid allowing their, allowing their child to be in. Yes. And, and now you were taken to uh, a couple of examples of the publications by my learned friend. Yes. But I take it you can say of your own knowledge that there's more than just a couple of articles dealing with the question of child molestation? There's more than just two, yes. And in fact, um, in many of those articles, the emphasis is placed upon the family as the principal environment for the purposes of protecting children from abuse? Both, both protecting and also responding if a child discloses. Yes. Now, um, you were asked some questions, going back to the table, you were asked some questions about the table, and in particular you were asked some, about, about some questions about the social and cultural factors. Um, yes. It's, um, I, I take it, because I'm not familiar with the work of Mr. Finkelhor, that the table is really just a summary way of expressing some uh, social and cultural factors. And to really understand the points that are being made, one would need to actually read what has been written about such matters. Right. Well, so this was... This is a model that was advanced in 1984, yes. and so various pieces of the model have been examined through empirical research to determine which would be more or less um, important. So there's, there's both the background of what brought them to this model, but then there's been research that's been conducted over the past 30 years to, to look at particular pieces of it. And the social, social and cultural factors do you know whether those social and cultural factors were considered in the context of religious organizations? I don't know the answer to that. So it may be that the social and cultural factors there set out are not specific to, or indeed are based upon any knowledge or research involving religious organizations. I don't know. Do you want to pardon me for one moment? I have only a few, couple more questions. His Honour uh, asked you some questions, and I think the answer that you gave um, talked about the maximum choices available. Do you recall that answer? Yes. yes. And I take it that's in the context of the more sensitive, uh, the more nuanced the response, uh, the more choices available to the victim the more likely it is that the appropriate response uh, will be provided. 
That's what I mean, yes. So in considering uh, the choices and considering the, sense of the need for sensitivity, um, one would consider a number of variables, including, for example, the age of the victim. Yes. Uh, the religious belief of the victim. So I, I want to understand your question. Um, you're, so what I was saying was that allowing the person to answer specific questions about what they need and what's going to make it easier for them is appropriate. Yes. Now I think that you're saying more comprehensively the response system itself should accommodate for various characteristics of the person? Well, what I'm saying, for example, is that it may be helpful to the witness and to the Commission, indeed, if my learned friend asked it as an open question, not a leading question, then the witness would be able to respond. No, um, you take whatever course you like. I, I think I know what you're trying to say. Thank you, Anna. Um, it'll always be dependent upon the appropriate option being one that's offered, though, of course. Yes, Your Honour. Mm. Yes. I mean, yes. It's, it, it, it's the simple point that um, ultimately um, some victims may wish to confront the abuser, yes. some may not. Uh, some victims may be comfortable in one environment and others may not. And it's yes. the... Unda undoubtedly true. But, yes. Um, as you know, at the moment we have documents that tell us what the rules are. You'll need to help us to tell us if there are other rules and where they're to be found. Understood, Your Honour. Thank you, Your Honour. Your Honour, no further questions. Thank you. No one else, any questions? Oh, you're right. I have nothing further, Your Honour. Doctor, thank you for your evidence today. Now, if uh, Mr Toppy wants you to prepare further material, uh, then the Commission would welcome it on condition that uh, it comes within probably a couple of weeks, the outside. Is that possible? I'll have to look at my calendar and, and look at what I'm asked to do. Yeah. Um, well, um, I don't think we can accept more than two weeks from today, yeah. given our time frames. And then, after that, you'd have to be available perhaps by video link from wherever you happen to be at the time. Right. I assume you won't necessarily be in Australia in two weeks' time. Probably not. No. No. Um, right. I would just want to make sure that it's something that's helpful to the Commission and, and well, that, that that's spelled out so that I can be sure that, that I'm within what it is that you'd like to review. Well, Mr Topley will help, help you there. Okay. But I, I stress again, as I've said to Mr Topley, it's not a competition. Okay. We're not really interested if you happen to have an opinion that someone's better than someone else. Yeah. Do you understand that? My thinking is if I can add something as far as the historic piece, um, then it might be, because sometimes there's societal norms, there's organizational norms, and then there's individual problems. And yeah. so maybe I would be able to help out with some of that. Well, we need all the help we can get. <sighs> thank you. But otherwise, thank you. Today you are excused on those conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. far from four o'clock. Um, the two relatively short witnesses, uh, you're based in Brisbane. I released them this afternoon to go back to Brisbane, and we'll arrange to have them by video conference next week. The next substantive witness, Mr. DeRoy, um, will come and start at 10 a.m. on Monday, at your, if that's convenient to your Honour and Commissioner. We'll adjourn now until 10 o'clock on Monday.